Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. This episode of the Sports Spectrum podcast with Liberty head football coach Turner Gill is brought to you in part by Compassion International. Grateful to have them on board as a partner with us here at Sports Spectrum, $38 a month. They do it right. They release children from poverty. They give them hope, and that's what we all, uh, that's what all children deserve, and that's what we all, I think, want to uh, see happen in the lives of young people is have them be released from poverty. No child should ever have to go through the basic essentials of life, and compassion is making it possible for you to make a difference in a child's life, education and tutoring, medical care and food that they need, vocational training as they get older, and the opportunity to know Christ. Over 150,000 children have chosen to follow Jesus Christ in the last year alone through the great work being done by Compassion International. Here's the website, compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Go there, sponsor a child. It's just $38. I promise you, you won't regret it. Compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Sponsor a child today. Today's guest on the podcast, he is Turner Gill, Liberty head football coach, and he's been there uh, as the head coach at Liberty since 2012. Actually, December of 2011 was when he was named coach. His first season was 2012. He was the 2007 MAC Coach of the Year at the University of Buffalo, where he coached from 2006 to 2009. He then moved on to Kansas, where he was the Jayhawks' lead man from 2010 to 2011, where he was let go and then was signed on by Liberty to be their football coach and has been there now. This is his seventh season with Liberty. And this year, 2018, is a big year for Liberty football. They're in their first year as an NCAA Division I FBS team, as an independent. And that's a big deal. That's like the biggest level of college football. And next year, they actually become bowl eligible. So lots of great things happening with Liberty football, and Turner Gill is leading the way there. If you remember the name Turner Gill, if you're a little bit older, you might actually remember him as a football player at the University of Nebraska from 1980 to 1983. And he's in that famous game against Miami where they were they fell one point short. They decided to go for two in the national championship game and uh, missed out, did not win it. Uh, but he was legit. He was a, a big-time player with Nebraska, finished fourth in the Heisman Trophy voting in 1983, and, and a really great player there. So he's loved in Nebraska, and he's certainly loved right now in Liberty with all that's going on with Liberty football. So excited for you to hear our conversation with Coach, and uh, let's get right to it. Without further ado, Liberty head football coach Turner Gill joins us here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Take a listen. Coach Gill, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to be here, and uh, again, to God be the glory. Amen, my friend. It's great to have you on. Uh, and I think we can start with just kind of now for a second. Your game against... Norfolk State on September 15th was was moved to December 1st because of Hurricane Florence. And I know we're sort of a week removed, maybe a few days removed. And you're in Virginia versus maybe in the North Carolina area. But how are you and everyone at Liberty and, and how were you guys affected by the, the, the hurricane at all where you guys were? Well, we were, uh, you know, we didn't have as much uh, rain as we thought we were going to get hit with. We did get the rain and, and so on, but, uh, well, we didn't have a whole lot of flooding uh, here where we're located in the central part of Virginia. Uh, I think just a little bit south of us, got a little bit more there, um, about uh, two hours from us. But, again, I think our guys, we gave them a, a couple of days off there that weekend when the game got canceled and gave them a chance just to relax and just to enjoy time uh, uh, and praying with the Lord and spending time with some of our coaches' families and, and get a chance to see us in a different light uh, as far as our relationship with our, our wives and then our, our kids. Yeah, did that affect – I mean, was it, is the preparation different? You know, you're, you're a very – I'm guessing many, like many coaches I've talked to and gotten to know, you know, repetition and sort of staying on a schedule is important. And then all of a sudden you don't have a game and, you know, you hear that it's being postponed. Did that affect your preparation, uh, you know, as a coach? And now you obviously have a game in a couple of days against North Texas. So you kind of move forward to that. But how was the preparation affected? 
Well, yeah, it, it adjusts a little bit there. Obviously, one day, a sudden, you're you're preparing for to play a football game, and then, then you know, within 24, 48 hours, you're kind of not playing a football game, and then all of a sudden, I got to make some adjustments on practice time. Uh, then you also got to get preparation and say, well, do we continue on this opponent, or we go on the next opponent? So we end up going on the next opponent uh, that's coming up here on North Texas, and uh, we gave a chance to um, spend some time with them and, and uh, spend some time before preparing uh, for them. And then also, you got the lifting schedule. You to change all those type of things and then uh, how much do I practice how much do I do I do a scrimmage uh, how much do I run them so there's a whole lot of those things that got adjusted to trying to say okay now we're going to be playing and, and uh, it's going to be another week or so before we play another game and what's my best way to get my team ready to play uh, for the next football game that we have so a lot of talk with a lot of different people my trainers my strength coach my coaches uh, support staff people uh, and then continue to pray with the Lord uh, obviously I always pray to him each and every day is uh, we, we prepare every day, so we uh, we do our devotion every day with our staff, and so uh, that always some things that we pray about each day. What comes up, and uh, we pray about me just to to have the right schedule uh, each and every day according to God's plan. Yeah, what is that like for you? I mean, obviously there's there's spiritual disciplines as believers that we all need to have, or habits if you want to call them them. But you know, it's off season and it's in season, and obviously in season. For a coach, it's it's a different type of busy and, and chaos, if you will, that's there that the off season maybe doesn't present to itself. So, how do you make sure that those connections with the Lord and disciplines continue during your during a season? What does that look like for you? Well, I think uh, really for us, uh, it's it's uh, it's always the same for us whether we're in season, out of season. When I speak on that, I'm talking about the spiritual aspect of things. Mm. Uh, every day we start off our our, our day with a devotion. Uh, every coach or a staff member has a fine day. There's usually two people per day that uh, they rotate in. As far as on a Monday, it's you know two people and they alternate it. So every day we start off, there's somebody that leads us in a prayer or leads us also in devotion to what God has laid on their heart, whether they uh, talk about the scripture, about the God is uh, shared in their life last night, the day before, or whatever it may be. Uh, then another thing we do is every day we have a player or a staff member stand before the football team and they share their their testimony. Mm. Those that who have not accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, then I have them. I have them to say, okay, tell me who is the most influential person in your life and why. Mm. So, again, every staff member and every coach uh, does that every single day. Uh, you know, whenever we're meeting as a group, we have that. And if it's an off day, we don't. But if any time we have meetings or we got to practice, uh, even in the off season, every day that we come together, we have those things happen. The other thing I have our, our staff and our players do, they got to state the vision statement. They got to state the mission statement. Our vision statement is to inspire each other to glorify Christ on and off the field while striving to be. Our mission statement, which you got to do the mission to get to the vision. Is uh, we talk about there's a, the word believe, and uh, we kind of go through it real quick. And here is B is building champions for Christ, uh, and that comes from Colossians three twenty three. Work at everything you do with all your heart. Uh, we talk about then E is empower people by encouragement. I got that scripture there in First Thessalonians five eleven. So mm-hmm. cheer each other up and hope you have everyone to build each other up in the, in the right way. Uh, then this L is learning, press on toward the goal. Uh, that comes from Philippians 3, 13, 14, and, and all just uh, talking about that we got to push hard with ahead and move on toward the goal to win the prize according to, to God. I is influenced by being a positive role model. Uh, just that uh, verse that kind of came from there was in Romans 12, to, uh, 2. Do not live any longer the way of this world. Live, live your way of thinking be completely changed. Yeah. Uh, then the E is expect great effort all the time. And First Corinthians nine twenty four in a race, all the runs run, but only one gets the prize. So you know that you you don't you so you run the way that you will get uh, the prize. V is visualize excellence in the word believe. Uh, that's from Philippians uh, four thirteen. Uh, I can do everything through Christ, the power of Christ. He gives me strength. And the last one in the word uh, believe is E. We say enjoy the college football experience, and that comes from John 10.10. 10. He says, I have come the way that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. So after every practice, we have a staff member or player state those things. Hmm. So we just don't have the vision and the mission that I said at the beginning of the year, and we never say that again, or we never bring it back up again. Daily, we talk about our vision. Daily, we talk about our mission. 
And so those are the things that are very, very important to us. And the other thing I'll refer to lastly is the core values. Now, can I get a quick uh, catch? You see is the acronym. It talks about character, uh, attitude is for A, T is teachability, C is communication, H is humility, and U is unity and C is commitment. So those are our vision, mission, and core values that we stand by daily, and we talk about that, and we give all the glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's awesome. We're talking to Turner Gill, the Liberty head football coach here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Let me ask you about, and I guess I just assumed, and maybe that's I shouldn't something I shouldn't, that every person who goes to Liberty or plays on the football team, and I know a lot of people who've gone to Liberty or, or are currently there, are just Christians. You know, you just assume that because it's such a faith-based school. But there are some, you mentioned it, that that haven't, you know, sort of taken that step and made that decision for Christ yet. How do you, you know, you don't hide and you're not ashamed ever about your faith, but there's still a, a sort of a navigation you have to kind of make, I guess, in their world of not forcing faith on them, but never being ashamed of and being intentional about how do you how do you do that? How do you navigate through that with those that maybe don't have a spiritual foundation and aren't quite there yet in their faith? Well, this is the Evangelical Christian University, yeah. and uh, I guess I believe in the Evangelical Christian University stating that you do not have to accept the Christ of personal Lord and Savior. You have to know about it and understand yeah. it, but we have to be here to find the lost Mm. and bring them to know Christ. That's what this university is about, is trying to find the people who are lost. And again, all of us have been lost at some point in time in our lives, <laughs> those that have not accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Absolutely. If you're at a discipleship university, then that's a place where you're stating that we want people to accept the Christ, have professed it, they know the Lord, they're in the Bible every day, they're teaching the Word. That's different. But again, evangelical. So we talk about things that are here at Liberty University. You know, here, here are some things that you're going to have to abide by. You want to abide by that you're going to have to go to convocation three days a week. You want to abide by that you need to clean your room every day. You need to abide by that there's a curfew every night that you need to be in your room. Uh, you need to, to, to uh, go to some Bible study. You're going to have to take 15, 18 hours of Bible classes yeah. attending here at Liberty University. So when we're recruiting people and talking to people, we lay it on the line to them. We don't hide it. We don't, uh, uh, you know, be ashamed of it, you know, and in that over time, we find out whether they're a fit or they're a survivor or they are no fit. They're not a fit. Hmm. And, uh, and again, I think the, the, the biggest thing, obviously, a person who's fit, a person who knows the Lord, they love the Lord, and they're all, all gung-ho. A person that's a survivor is someone who is going to be acceptable of it. They're going to be not defiant about it. They're going to understand it, but they may not have a relationship with Christ at this point in time. Yeah. They're going to be re receptive of all the things that are going on. Then a person that's not a fit, he's going to be a person who's defiant, a person who's trying to find wiggle room and ways to try to go around things. So we don't want that kind of person here. We want the people who are a fit, and we want the people who are survivors. I mean, they're going to respect it. And then we just plant the seed and the Holy Spirit will take care of the rest and allow them to come to know Christ. It may not even happen within those four years that they're here or five years. It may not happen until after that. Yeah. But we let the Holy Spirit do it because it's always on God's time. It's not on my time. It's between a relationship with Christ and only between Christ and that person where they're going to say, I surrender. I need you. I want you, Christ, come into my life and accept me. Help me to get to where I can be obedient with you. Coach, when did that start with you? When was your faith sort of, when did you become transformed by renewing your mind, if you will, from Romans and, and, and make Christ your Savior? Was that something at an early age or did that not come until maybe college? Well, it came out of college. Uh, I grew up in the uh, a church with my mom. My mom was the, the forefront of all. She was in the choir. She was leading uh, uh, church studies and Bible studies and so on and so forth in the church. My dad was the the work person, going to two or three jobs. He didn't really attend church at all with us. He was out, out working. He really that he was a provider, and then the mom would be the person that to assist us in the uh, the biblical aspect of it. Right. So again, I uh, went to college, knew about it and all that, but I had not accepted Christ. I got baptized, but I didn't accept the Christ. Uh, I got baptized around eight, nine, ten years old, and then later on, when I came to know Christ after college, I heard the gospel, I heard all the things, 
but really I, I ended up uh, having some good things occur. Uh, I was able to play football, play baseball in college, and, and then I had a chance to go play Canadian football. And then once I kind of reached that point, I said, wow, that's it. Uh, I still didn't find the total peace and joy that I thought I would feel as in a worldly standpoint to say, okay, I'm playing football. I'm having some success. I'm playing now at the highest level in the Canadian Football League as a professional football player, and I still don't have the joy that I think I was going to have. Yeah. So I talked with a friend of mine who played with me in Nebraska, and he actually played with me as a teammate at Nebraska. He was one year ahead of me. And so then I came to uh, Montreal, Canada, played with him, and, man, I said, man, I've admired you for the last three, four, five years. And you know, we were not necessarily friends where we hung out with each other after practice or after things of that nature. Uh, I said, I need to sit down and talk to you. I said, I've always admired who you are, what you're all about. I've always seen a... A, a joy and a peace and an excitement about you, but I saw it. It was coming from the inward. It was always coming from the inside. Then it came outside. It wasn't just something from an outside appearance. And I said, I, I need to sit down and talk to you about that part of your life. What, what, what's that about? And that's where he shared the golf. He said, hey, the only way you're going to get this peace, the only way you're going to get this true peace and joy is by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You've got to surrender all these worldly things, Turner, and that's the only way. you got to have a relationship, a, a true relationship. you got to work at it. You have to spend time with it. And once he told me that, then that's when I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And, man, I've knocked that door down. And just like it says in Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will hear him and dine with him and he with me. So the Lord is dining with me each and every moment of the day. I accept that. I acknowledge that. And I continue to try to grow uh, in that uh, as far as Jesus Christ. So that's how I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior in December of 1985. That's awesome. And I know that, you know, you mentioned playing quarterback and, and playing college football at Nebraska at a very high level back in the 80s. And I wonder for you about Tom Osborne and what he's meant to you as a player when you played as a coach, because he's a man of faith. And certainly maybe you weren't completely walking with the Lord during college, but I have to imagine he had such an impact on you and maybe continues to have an impact. Tell me about Coach Osborne and the impact he's had on you, maybe as a husband, father, father, father of Christ, all of that. Well, yeah, he's, he uh, obviously he was the main reason why I chose the University of Nebraska. Um, I don't know, God laid on my heart at that time. Obviously, I wasn't a mature Christian or wasn't a Christian at that time, but there was something about him that I said, I want this man. I said, this man's going to help me for the rest of my life. I can see him going to help me in the football, but I said, there's something about him that I know he's going to be able to help me to be a better person. Now, my dad's going to do that too, but it's always good to have another male person in your life. And he was that person. We were somewhat similar in our personalities. I was not much of a uh, outgoing person. I was an introvert. Didn't say a whole lot. I only I only would speak if you ask me a specific question. Uh, I was a really reserved person uh, as far as that goes. As far as as a young man, and so uh, he taught me how to value people as I was a, as a player. And then I got a chance to be an assistant coach with him. I really got to see all the insides a lot more about who he is and why he is the way he is when I became an assistant football coach with him. Mm-hmm. Again, he, I think the one thing that continues to stand out in me is that how he showed how you value every single person. And you show them how and why they are valued, why they are valued highly. No one's any less or more valued than anyone as a player staff member, so on. I saw his interaction with people. I saw his interaction with workers. I saw his interaction with people that would come in and just to say hello to him. He had this unique way of making someone he could just meet just one time. And man, you could just see it in them. They felt they felt so valued and valued in a Christian way, not in a worldly way. Right. Not from the standpoint they just met the person who's the head coach at the University of Nebraska. It was a different look in their eyes. And so I just uh, always value that and I always uh, and continue today to value really everyone around you and show them that they're valued and why they value it, no matter who they are and why they are the way they are as far as according to God. Because God has made each and every one of us with great value. It's up to us, though, to find find that true value of how God has wired each and every one of us to do his will in the value that the way he's wired 
every single one of us. We get into trouble when we start looking outside the true value of how God has wired each and every one of us, and we start searching for those temporary things. And the temporary things then gets us all into trouble. But when you know when you're a Christian, you at least know where to go get the information to get you back on track. If you're not a Christian, if you have not accepted Christ for your Savior, you're going to always look for those temporary things. So, Coach Osmond has been a, a great mentor. He is a, an accountability partner for me. He was a groomsman in my wedding, uh, and I, I just really continue to value and we continue to talk on the, uh, um, you know, probably two or three times a month, uh, just about life, just about uh, things that are going on. And uh, again, you know, I'm greatly appreciated and uh, greatly honored and privileged to continue to have a, a great relationship with him. Coach, I really appreciate your time. I just have one more question, I guess. And I know you were a head coach prior to Liberty at Buffalo and then at Kansas. I wonder from a leadership perspective and as a believer, you know, it's different being at a Buffalo or Kansas. I speak from experience. I used to work at ESPN and just being a Christian in a place like that. And now I work for a sports and faith ministry. You are a coach for Liberty who is unashamed about, you know, like I said, and like you mentioned, the, the, the faith connection in Jesus Christ. So tell me about the difference in how, and maybe there isn't a difference in how you were leading at a place like Buffalo in Kansas and then coming to Liberty where I'm not going to say it's easier, but it's certainly well more accepted to talk about Christ in a place like Liberty than maybe other places. What did that look like for you? Well, I think if people ask a question, uh, are you doing anything different than what you did at Buffalo or Kansas or whatever? And again, none XO stuff, but yeah. uh, really I, I've always had the situation of where I would share, uh, my faith with my team. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would give our staff, we would have a devotion every morning. I, when I got interviewed by the people, I said, well, I'm going to have a devotion with our staff. I really believe that's how God has wired me to do. Uh, I also spoke about us having an opportunity to say that, uh, when God puts things on my heart, there's going to be times where I'm going to share the gospel with our coaching staff. I'm going to share the gospel with our with our players. Yeah. Uh, and I told this administration that again. I, I said when God lays something on my heart, I got to I got to I got to talk to him about it. Uh, I said I'm going to have opportunities where I want to uh, share a, a scripture uh, on a weekly basis as far as a theme of the week with my team. Uh, and so that's what I did. Uh, I shared the scripture to him about it. I gave him a worldly view. I, I gave them a, um, a, a scripture uh, a view of it all, and then I gave them a definition of a word. Mm-hmm. And that's how I explained it when I got before we get hired. I said, here's how I'm going to do, how's our, here's how I want to be able to incorporate the spiritual aspect, because I think that's important. We all have been made by God. And whether I'm at Buffalo or I'm at Kansas, I said, I need to share these things, because that's how God has wired me, uh, again, to share my story. And part of my story is, I have accepted Christ as my first Lord and Savior. And so on a weekly basis, I'm going to use a word a week to give to my staff and give to my players so they have a better understanding of, of, of uh, what the God has in store for them each and every week. So those are some of the things that I, I did, what God had called me to do, and I did not have any issues uh, with people at uh, the different universities that I have been at. That's great. He is uh, Turner Gill, head coach of Liberty Football. And uh, just excited for you, Coach. One and one on the season. You face North Texas on Saturday at home, expecting a big crowd there at Liberty for the Flames. And uh, just excited to watch how God uses you and your team the rest of the year. Thank you for joining us here on the podcast and look forward to talking to you again soon. Well, thank you. And uh, I guess leave this little note here in uh, John 14, 6. It says, I'm in the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. Thank you. And we do thank Turner Gill, Liberty head football coach, for joining us here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. Liberty stands at 1-1 and early here in the season and face North Texas on Saturday, September 22nd at home in Lynchburg, Virginia. Wish coach and the Liberty football team nothing but the best for the rest of this season. We thank him and we thank you for joining us. We thank Compassion International for sponsoring this podcast. $38 a month makes a gigantic difference in a child's life by your donation, by your contribution, by your impact for $38 on a child's life. It works. And most of us long to make a difference, right? But we struggle to know how or what to do or who to trust. And that's why I can encourage you to sponsor with compassion for $38, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. Compassion.com slash sports spectrum. That's the website. $38 a month, make a difference in a child's life by sponsoring them 
with compassion. Go to compassion.com slash sports spectrum. Sponsor a child today. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. You can find us on the web at sportspectrum.com, where we have daily devotionals as well as content every single day on the intersection of sports and faith. You can email me directly, jason at sportspectrum.com, and you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere on social media. Sports Spectrum is there. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time right here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. Have a great rest of your day. 